Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And uh, we're going to be looking at a highly controversial comic uh, today, today here <laughs> on uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe. Uh, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make, but also we have a Patreon. Patreon.com uh, slash Cartoonist Kayfabe. It's in the description uh, below this video. And the King Kayfabers gets to see all of our videos before uh, anybody else. Uh, they also get to watch us and hang out with us while we record these videos. Completely mitigates the kayfabe effect, and uh, it supports the channel. These are some of the forthcoming books that we have coming out. Uh, Street Angel Princess of Poverty is forthcoming and coming out uh, reasonably soon. It collects all of the Street Angel material that is not in Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, so having both books get you all of Jimmy's Street Angel comics to date. Red Room Crypto Killers 1 is being offered to your comic shop right now. Uh, it's going to be coming out on a monthly basis, so while you get your shop to order issue one, get them to issue two, three, and four also. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. These are the various covers that are going to be included with uh, the very first issue of Red Room Crypto Killers. And we are putting out a Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus Edition that, as of this recording, 50 bucks on Amazon. It's going to be $75 in the stores. So grab it sooner than later. Lock in your price at that level. Uh, this is another sample of our bibliography. Two volumes of Red Room out there in the wild. Three volumes X-Men Grand Design. Four volumes Hip Hop Family Tree. Hulk Grand Design is out there on the stands going quick. Jimmy also has the Plain Janes out there uh, that you can purchase. And uh, without further ado, taking a look at uh, Heroes, Heroes Reborn. Captain America, number one. Spectacular issue. Rob Liefeld, Jeff Loeb. Starts off. Pledge of Allegiance, goddammit. <laughs> Five pages of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff, World War II uh, glory, I suppose, here, right? Jeff Loeb getting paid, man. Boy, those airplanes are funny. They look like they should transform. Sure. Yeah, all of it. It almost looks like the, the feet are back here. And, and, and those are GoBot. They are GoBots. <laughs> yeah, it's GoBots designs, man. You can imagine a guy's face right in there with the same little spinning top head. Uh it looks like it looks like Nazis shooting Nazis with the helmets and stuff. Not a lot of historical detail. No. And also, whoever's coloring that sky, I don't know what filter that is, but um, they put the goddamn Wacom. It inside, doesn't feel like in a sky. In, be in between their butt cheeks <laughs> and shimmy, there they twerked on the page. There used to be that filter. It might still be there in Photoshop, and it was like render clouds. <laughs> That's what they needed to do on that. Wow. Yeah. You could just tell. You could see the marks with, with a blurry fucking Wacom Cintiq or something. And uh, I do want to point out, like, this was part of that Heroes Reborn big, big Marvel move to bring some of the image guys back, the Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, to do a couple of their books. We have looked at Avengers number one, which was the other Rob Liefeld contribution, and we've looked at Fantastic Four number one, which was one of the Jim Lee books. So check out those videos if you're interested in this time period and this uh, this this big... I don't know if crossover is the right word, but this big project. I mean, it certainly was a big promoted project. Probably one of, probably Marvel's big promo that year would have been this Heroes Reborn move. And it was a big deal. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Incredible. And I will say, I never bought any of this shit. Shouts to... Sure you didn't. Shouts to Shirley jo <laughs> Doe who, who gave me his entire comic collection. And it included all of this material, man. But I was I was well done with uh, that kind of comic by by this time, certainly, man. I was amassing uh, my Love and Rockets collection, putting together eight ball comics. Uh, whenever I would get some big money, I would grab a new volume of uh, the Complete Crumb comics. Uh, I paid attention to this. I looked at it. Certainly, we all know Uncle Rob's Captain America drawing. You know the famous one. But the, big, the big chest. The big chest, man. But it's all here. That's amazing, Ed. We got it all. I don't even have one, like like the first number ones of all of these. <laughs> there, I can't believe you're this deep on them. <laughs> there's an interesting... It would be like Nerd Jeopardy or something like that, where on the, uh, the Jim Lee shit, where like Wildcats and Death Blow and stuff are showing up in there. It's some of the weirder things. Yeah, right at the end too. Isn't there like 13 issues of Fantastic Four? And uh, and it's like a crossover that at the end. Yeah, here you go. Like you see Maul. So like the nerd Jeopardy would be like, like the Wildstorm characters are like 
Richard Belzer's character Munch on TV shows where like that character is like on X Files and Law and Order and Homicide and the you know fifteen other television shows. Like Death Blow and Grifter and the Wildcats, they're in Marvel comics, they're in Valiant comics, they're in DC comics, they're DC comic characters now. There's like it's a it's a very interesting yeah, I never really thought about it. You're right. That is kind of a strange pedigree for these characters. It's like the Charlton heroes all over again. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What a collection. <laughs> Got them all. That would be the fun thing to bind. Bind those things in about a six inch thick card cover. Yes, sir. Uh, I feel like there must be some big Jeff Loeb influence on this issue in some way. Because when Rob Liefeld is just going ham, he's, he goes, hey, he can't stop himself. And it's all action all the time. We don't get very much Captain America in this thing. It's all set up. Uh, right. And I do think that that's writer influence. Also, I think that there are lots of ghost hands in uh, these works. Like, I see Rob here. I don't see Rob here. Yeah, you're, you you may be right about that. Because he also does half of that Avengers number one issue. So and that's been, called like, out. Already your scheduling is, is maybe you're a little behind the eight ball there. Yeah, totally. The, 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 that's called out. But but this is this is credited as Rob Liefeld Story Pencils edits. John Sibyl inks. John Sibyl is not my favorite inker. Like of this kind of style, of this kind of time, Danny Miki was my guy. And Sibyl would have these like tick marks that I just looked really ugly. That nose. I, I've never seen that. Uh, that particular approach. Yeah, it's to not like very a Rob good. Liefeld. Yeah, it's like an uplighting kind of gimmick, man. Yeah, the story here, Steve Rogers doesn't remember his past, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's like a Captain America. Manchurian candidate kind of gimmick, man, where he's just some kind of square dude. Uh, Rob Liefeld didn't draw that. There's no way. The, like, There's a couple other background shots where uh, I just don't think Rob drew. Also, is that one of the, is that the image TV anchor? Pretty recording? close. Pretty close. This is a such odd storytelling piece right here, man. Where so so much nondescript backgrounds, all that's all that classic shit. Also, is this the Terminator? <laughs> right. He Rob would do that, right? Like like his chapel would have that. But often it's not that pronounced. You know, like it'll be like sort of horizontal lines, and then like the colorist might pop some white in the middle. That is like that's a big one. Just a white tiny circle. Yeah, yeah, those are big ones. Uh, it was actually a little confusing to me because like I thought this was this guy for a minute, but then you see this guy mm, there, right? And Almost he, shades of Matrix or something. Yeah, that guy, that guy following. And and uh, I was I was hoping I was going to pop that. Uh, Rob Liefeld created like the uh, Sam Jackson, Nick Fury. Like that's what I was hoping. But then I'm like, well, that's two dots, and and maybe that just isn't Nick Fury. And it's I like not. to imagine that's classic uh, cartooning influence, like the little uh, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> Cafeteria, has some nondescript uh, factory or something. It is interesting how. Uh, static and brown the yeah. stuff is like the non captain america stuff is so far from that like four color bright saturated look yeah the character's very up and down you know like not a dynamic pose to be found here this page is rooted in a certain time period when, when i was a little kid i used to consider it a badge of honor like if i was able to stay awake when the television would go off the air and turn into a uh, color bars and then when it would come back on the air at like either five in the morning or six in the morning, it would do like the Pledge of Allegiance or or, or like what, one of those Rockets Red Glare, like one, one of those fucking patriotic songs. And I remember on Fox, it would show this like, it would be this aerial photography of like the Blue Angels or something going over the Grand Canyon and like shooting like red, white and blue smoke like out from their jets. Man, I don't remember to, that at all. To start the uh, broadcast day. That's I. They should get back to that. Yeah, maybe they even do. I just don't know. But like, yeah, we were alive at a time when like television wasn't a twenty-four hour. Yeah. Medium. Look at the this this effect. Just fill in space. Absolutely, and Rob getting getting paid, man. Like, with with, with Chester Chester uh, Brown pages. You know what I mean? Like, just put like a little <laughs> three panels gimmick on Chester that. Chester Brown period. Yeah. <laughs> he found yummy fur. Here we go, though. This is the this is what we came for, right? Making some money. Making some loot, for sure. Going to sell that piece for five figures, for sure. But you see these, like, this kind of shit? That's that John Sabal stuff with these, yeah. like, thicks and these, like, blobby edges. I, I hate it. 
I would say like he reminds me a lot of Scott Williams in that like it's so precise. Well, I, I all those guys at, uh, that were wanted, wanted to be that. I don't feel like Mickey's that smooth. Like the smoothness, I guess, is what precise isn't the, maybe the right word, but the smoothness yeah. where like you could almost do those with French curves. You're gonna have to relook at Danny Mickey, dude. Yeah, maybe. Like like he was he was he was Rob's Rob's uh, Scott Williams for sure. Those, look at those helmets, dude. <laughs> It's like Dirk, the dastardly or whatever from 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 uh, from uh, what, what what was uh, that character man from uh, Dragon's Lair? I think there were some characters in Smurfs that look like that. He's so like angular. Yeah, the you know, sharp like knees. Knee is sharp. The toes are sharp. Yeah, this is a very specific period of of Rob work here. The big thing was changing the the head thing from the A to that eagle, and I then think that was the big controversial redo yeah and then as soon as rob gets off of this he buys the license to for uh fighting american. fighting american and carries that same symbol that's a fun face <laughs> our boy waking up he has one nostril right right in the middle of the nose <laughs> once you see it you can't unsee it hilarious boy the colorist is working Look at that! Look at that stance, man. How could that not? How can he not know that he's a superhero standing that wide? If you can stand that way and not tip over, yeah, and not sing soprano. That's right. Now we have our Karen Kelly, Bucky, Carrie Kelly, Bucky. <laughs> look at this gang, dude. <laughs> right? Yeah, look at him here, dude. <laughs> and that's her brother. Wow. And dude, it's to dude. It's the period of time. It's um, American History X. Where like there's like the little brother who's who's the Eddie Furlong character, and then there's that Ethan Supley dude who's super cut and beefy now, but he was a big fat fuck yeah. back back in the day. Uh, you know, Boy Meets World, Schooner is a sailboat on that the Kevin dude Smith is movies. Large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, he's he's thirty heads tall. Yeah. So these little dudes, man, they're like they're like uh, we're gonna go become neo Nazis, man, because like there's a meeting at the beer hall. <laughs> Look at this too. This is one of those I think Rob Liefeld changes, like the way he approaches some of those those figures. I have no idea what that's from, but around toy time, mm -hmm. like the shaft, whenever he got those gigantic boots, you know, like there were like just a few of these things that would come in that were like, I don't know what from, what the influence was. I feel like it's manga, but this guy's shape is one of those. Yeah, you know that's a non Marvel House style shape right there. Yeah, more of these Sibyl fucking strokes, man. That just, just irk me. Got some old church. Where we just got. Some... I love this dude sitting here. Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like the Stacy Keach from American History X, like like the old head who's like gonna like rally, rally the uh, the 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 youngsters into into being part of his gimmick. Masterman. This is um foreshadowing whenever uh, didn't they stunt Captain America like five years ago or something? Whenever they had him like be. A Nazi? Do you remember that? I do, because it was like written about so like uh, people online were like, "What the fuck are you doing? What are you doing?" Blah blah blah. And it's like, yo, don't you guys read comics? This is part one of six. Of course, he's gonna be a good guy. And he's infiltrating or something. Like, let him tell their story. Yeah, pro that was pro wrestling one hundred and one. All right, <laughs> and it worked. Oh, it totally worked. If they completed the story. Tell me this isn't like a manga pacing, though. I know, like all these, you know, like the wording yeah, Jeff Loeb is slows different, it down. but it's it's totally like the the feels that way that spread. Sure. The the comic, the comic. It's it's a very breezy comic. You you never get more than you know three four panels a page. Uh, if 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 the the pages had actual storytelling value to them, it would it would it would be totally a manga. I kind of like this panel. It's wild, right? Yeah, it is having like the furrowed brow stuff, but that's all. Almost like veins or arteries very, or something squirting yeah, out of his forehead. Yeah, though. very abstract. Or the Crimson Mask, and he liked it so nice, he did it twice. Yeah. <laughs> Central casting bad guys right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> monocle. Add the monocle. Now he's talking to the, to the youth, sowing dissent amongst the, amongst the, the working class youth. But then you got a, you got a little mole in there. Mm. You got a little mole. Ethan Hunt. Yeah. And he goes to the basement of that damn church and sees five uh, nuclear warheads. This is so wild. Like, the perfectly horizontal 
parallel lines across three panels. It feels like such a rule break. Uh, totally. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because there's, it's all it's um it's Nintendo perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, but but Rob, you know, trusted the colorist to make it work or something. And uh, have, keeping the character like at a level. Yeah, I don't understand why you wouldn't have it going down. Like, like move that character so at least it looks like he's heading down to you know wherever this is. Rob is blasting stuff out. He's blasting these pages out, man. His warheads looks like giant crayons. They do. <laughs> they do. And this is just wild stuff. He's the Rob. Is, Rob is playing around, man. He's 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 doing some new stuff. Yeah, I kind of I kind of like the shading. Going full black shadow for faces. How long do you think it takes to make, to do those eyes, to render those eyes? Half hour? <laughs> a colorist is learning their, earning their paycheck there. Oh, here we go. Suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> don't establish the bum if you don't uh, continue to use the bum. How much, uh, how much perspective planning went into that page? I do think he used a guide. Like I think, th- like you know, there is a vanishing point there, but you know, you take all the color and stuff away, it really is. It's like Eternity Comics background. You know, you see that background in submissions. Mm-hmm. You know, like like we were doing these backgrounds. Boy, like, orange you know, and purple for your backgrounds. It's so bizarre. Little old dude knows the guy's name, so that piques Steve Rogers' curiosity enough to join him and go to the basement. I would like to see the like like the, the imagine this page in line work. Sure. Like the vertical horizontals, like it's kind of interesting. Oh, look at that. Shiny shield. Yeah, I got to love this starburst. Totally, man. (laughs) And it's like, this is the thing to get the Manchurian candidate to like activate. What Mm -hmm. do they call them? It's like, it's a conspiracy, like uh, sleeper soldiers or something like that. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that's amazing just just added some visual variety in a fully open panel the size the scale is is that's manga yeah i always called out hera tetsuo but uh rob always said that it's, it's um art adams mm. art adams and and art adams could have come from that place yeah i think so this rob you shouldn't you should have done it in ink dude you should not have left this to the um cartoon to the colorist and also the storytelling is bad because you just see the missiles kind of go off and it's it that's a nothing panel you know like and you could actually go past that and you need the dialogue to tell you what's what's happening uh but you should not have let the colorist do that one man you should you should have definitely did some finger paint explosions with white out and stuff because that that just looks like a, a campfire there's no explosion to that. And a, and a letter recognized... Richard Starkey was like, oh, this doesn't look like shit. I got to try to pack look some Look at how up. much digital is on that page. Yeah. Like, this is like, we have gone completely into the digital age of comics, and it is the beginning. Right. More of those damn textures. And they just... They destroyed that whole building to the point where Captain America, he's buried underneath a couple tons of rubble. But he's a superhero now. Look at that. Do you think Rob's involved with color concepts? Because I feel like you look at a page like this and it is just all the red, white, and blue shield. I like the concepts. I don't know about the execution, mm-hmm. but I like that you're th- that somebody's thinking this way. Yeah. And I wonder where that comes from. Ooh, here we go. Yeah. It's almost like a clone tool chest hair. Mm-hmm. You know, there's it's it is so exact. Yeah, every like it's every parallel hair is the same. lines coming off of his leg. Yeah, it's so far from what I think of as like well drawn hair. It's which even I it's strange to even say that. Sure, but you see so many approaches to it, and this is so inorganic. Yeah, I think it competes with all these other like hatchy lines. This is like the hair transplants, like yeah, 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 the plugs and uh, yeah, the hair plugs. They're they're the they're the um. And they're the plugs from Velvet Glove. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that dude's name Geeds? Geeds. Oh yeah, something like remember. that. That's what that's what it looks <laughs> like though. It's just perfectly in rows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you see it here, carry carry it on. Uh, but yeah, this background, I think I think I think a toady drew that. I don't think Rob. That's drew a lot this. of drawing. Yeah, and I I just don't see Rob Rob doing it. And and there's stuff in here that that I feel like might be somebody else. Man, the hatching on the crotch. Remember they used to do like the forehead semicircle that would point kind of at the crotch. Right, yeah, that was the OG Rob. But this is like 
total camel toe, man. Like that's the little fucking kitty smile. I would, I would, I would copy, you know, like this is how I was drawing stuff like in school Mm -hmm. and especially all those lines coming out like an asterisk there in the, in the middle. Right. And, uh, I remember my art teacher seeing that and being like, what is this? Yeah. Just calling attention to the (laughs) day. Like telling everybody that a penis goes here. Like, like stare at this point. (laughs) Right. And that's the thing, like, you know, blame it on Kirby. Like, like Kirby created the unique superhero. Like, you, you look at that stuff and, and, and nobody has, like, any kind of bulge on their crotch. And, and it's just been distilled down over the generations in, in varying degrees. Uh, and it is a, it's an adjustment, too. Like, when you see, when you see, like, uh, you know, rank Xerox, like, dudes running around in, like, a Speedo or something. And you see all the fucking ham and eggs and, and stuff going on down there. Like, maybe the... You know, just the flat surface is the approach. Cuts a dude's chest open. This, this is funny because this is like outlaw co- uh, Captain America. It's like Captain America for the for the nineties, man. And, and we're really going to take it there in a minute when you see like that last page, because it is it is like blues hammer in, in, <laughs> in, in, in Ghost World, where like you have the old the old real blues guy playing, and he's analog, and and he's doing this thing. He's like ignored. And then we're going to fucking put on the mascara. We're going to punch out the eyeglasses of these douchebag, you know, aim soldiers. Do you think part of the design of those figures was, oh, it'll look so good whenever we bust these eyes? <laughs> yeah, it was all building to that moment. And then uh, you got to have your finale of our dude, like, dig him out of the rubble. Look at that, like, mannequin. Stiff. Your death will be avenged. Rigor set in immediately on that neck. Like, that head ain't cocking back, ain't falling backward or nothing. It's as upright as it was when he's a standing fella. Yeah, and like, you know, dust to dust, like, you already see it. Color color scheme-wise, that hand's already half uh, degraded into the ground. (laughs) Right. All right, man, you ready for for the puss? Let's see the payoff. Captain America for the 90s, baby. Blues Hammer. (laughs) Right there, man. Look, he had an edible like two scenes ago. Now his eyes are just red. Black underneath because he didn't sleep for days, man. See, the edible, the edible is the come down for the three-day coke binge that gets your eyes to that level. Look at the amount of digital painting on like just the cheek here mm-hmm. as we go like that red under orange under under lighting and oh, man. That's a lot of lifting. The teeth. Look at how much rendering is on those teeth. We often talk about, like, you develop a style. Like, a, like a Charles Burns develops a style. And then how does that style work with intense close-ups and stuff? Like, do you do you make, you know, your hatch lines thicker? Or do you just do more of them uh, in that style? And it's real fun to, like, see that exercise at play with your favorite cartoonist. And, like, to see the close-up Rob Liefeld hair and how it is like rubber tubes with points at the tip. It's it's like the grass in Beetlejuice, you know, like on that little platform. Just these thick tubes of plastic hair. It makes me very curious how, what the pencils look like on this particular drawing based on like how precise is Sybil in those inks. If it, I look at this and I think like, you're really probably very close to the original pencils is my guess. Yeah, I think so too, man. And uh, Sybil... Sybil, like, never did Uncle Rob favors, really. And I think he is very close to those pencils because he, he ain't changing anything. And I, I, think, I, I think I have some evidence for... Uh... The other question I have is, like, Rob does seem to change styles. You know, like, he does seem to, I don't know, take into account whatever, try to get better, try to change his game a little bit. And I'm always curious about, I don't know why... Maybe, you know, because I look at this and I like different periods. That's kind of fun. So Larry mm-hmm. Strucker could be to blame for this piece too, man. You never see this drawing. Like, you know, they do those lists of Uncle Rob's drawings, man. And it's like 20, 20 worst Rob Liefeld drawings, whatever. And the stuff that people talk about is actually some of my favorite drawings. It's two right hands yep. on on this guy here. <laughs> and that one is just... It's all, there's a lot co- happening there. Uh, and we asked Klaus Jansen. You know, we had Klaus on the channel. And the very first question I asked him, man, the opener, Klaus, a guy draws two right hands uh, on, a, on, a, on a character. And, and, you're pen- and you're doing the inks over top of a penciler who draws two right hands. What do you do as the inker, man? And he said, you fix it. And these guys saw it. Use a fucking circle template for the head because maybe Rob did. 
this is the era. This, these ain't finishers. Yeah, the lines are so like straight, you know, or round, but but inorganic. The yeah, lines are very inorganic. Yeah. Also, this is the back, but it really that really looks like the front, doesn't it? Hey, how can you tell on Captain America with the anatomy? <laughs> I don't blame Rob for, like, somebody inked that. Somebody saw that and said, yeah, I'll ink that, and got paid for that. And It really is a different style, you know? Like, this kind of, I don't know, inking, shading, whatever that is, it does feel like we're getting away from what I think of as traditional Rob Liefeld style. Yeah. Like, these inkers are bringing out something else. Yeah. That's I mean, a pretty gnarly, uh, <laughs> look at that thing. Well, dude, we're going to have to save that for another day. Right. Like, never. The task at hand was to look at issue one. You also get a different thing whenever you do, like, the super full-page splash face. Like, when you draw a face this size yes. versus, like, whenever you're drawing, you know, a regular face and a right. bunch of panels. It's a different drawing. Like, it's a different beast that you're putting together. Yeah. Yeah. And and then if you, like, really study an eye and you see the three-dimensionality of, like, the bottom eyelid. Like, the like the eyelids are in perspective. Like, you ha you still have to think about perspective. So, like, with this image that they're giving us, you know, the perspective line, the horizon line is up here because you're, it di dictates your nose. Are you going to see the nostrils? Or are you not going to see the nostrils? And then when you're this close, it's about the perspective of the eyelids. Like, are you going to see the three dimensions of the bottom eyelid or the top eyelid? Like, there's a lot of stuff to consider. It's not just like, okay, draw a big face. It's so digital. Even putting gradients on your word boxes. <laughs> it's just, man, use all the tools. Jeff Loeb, man, he's, 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 he's bookending our sequence with the Pledge of Allegiance and exiting us with uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes quotes. Let's get out of here, man. K-Favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Uh, patrons. Patrons get our videos before anybody else, if, especially if you're a King K-Faber. And uh, they, King K Fabers also get to see uh, us record these videos live. Vids are brought to you by the books that we make. So, Jimmy, tell the people what you got. Street Angel, Princess of Poverty. That is my next book out soon. Pre-order it now. Collects all the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive. So you'll have a complete set and they will look nice on your shelf next to each other. You can also find Plain Janes and Hulk Grand Design also in print and available wherever you get books. And join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg where you can see more of my comics, download out of print zines and minis, and see the comics that I am working on now. Your, your shop can now order uh, Red Room Crypto Killers issue number one. Uh, this is what the cover looks like for the comics that you'll see on the stands, but there are several variants. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. At the end of the year, we're collecting all the Hip Hop Family Tree volumes into a big omnibus with 140 pages of new material. Uh, right now, as of this recording, it is uh, 50 bucks on Amazon, but uh, it's going to be more expensive, going to be $75 at a later date, maybe even later on uh, Amazon. So get your pre-order and now lock in your price uh there are four volumes of hip-hop family tree out there so complete your set if you don't have them all three volumes x-men grand design uh two red room trade paperbacks anti-social network and uh trigger warnings are out there and WYSIWYG. uh scoop up our books support the cartoon escape Fabe channel keeps the videos coming to you on a regular basis but that's not the only way to support the channel jimmy what else subscribe to the cartoon escape Fabe newsletter at the links below this video you can also find cartoon escape Fabe t-shirts merchandise hats sweatshirts stickers and lots more at our spread shop that link is also under this video all great ways to support the cartoon escape Fabe channel given those marching orders will be on our way read more comics